We're at that point in the year when we really start noticing the approach of winter. Leaves start changing color, the weather slowly gets colder, and the days are getting shorter. Naturally, this makes many wonder what the upcoming winter's looking like. Unlike last winter, which was driven by a strong El Niño, the cool phase of this climate pattern has returned, which will have a different impact on the weather we experience in the months ahead. Of course, every winter is different, so the purpose of this video is to really focus on how these climate patterns affect the European continent. After the meteorological foundation has been established, I'll then unveil my personal winter forecast in the final portion of the video. We have lots of information to cover today, so let's get started with section 1. Many of you have probably heard this term before, especially if you watch weather analysis videos or forecasts like this one, and that's because ENSO plays a significant role in the weather across the planet. In short, the El Niño Southern Oscillation refers to the interaction between the atmosphere and ocean over the tropical Pacific, and this ultimately results in an irregular variation of sea surface temperatures and precipitation distribution in the tropics. When trade winds are weaker and sea surface temperatures are above normal, this is known as El Niño, or the ENSO warm phase. The opposite phase is La Niña, which we expect to persist this winter. Stronger trade winds aid in upwelling, bringing cooler water to the surface. Lastly, an enzo neutral occurs when there's a transition between the warm and cold phases, and generally speaking, sea surface temperatures, tropical rainfall, and trade winds are near average. In addition to influencing tropical rainfall, different phases of enso have far-reaching impacts across the globe. Here's a helpful graphic from climate.gov which highlights some of the most significant changes to the weather when a La Niña is in place. Drier conditions are typically found in a portion of eastern Africa and southeastern China, while South Africa, Mozambique, and Madagascar is wetter. In the Americas, wetter than average conditions can be found in parts of Brazil, the northwestern United States, and the Ohio Valley, while northern Mexico and parts of the southern United States is drier. Looking towards Europe, this is actually the only continent which doesn't have any specific areas highlighted, and there's a reason for that. Just the simple fact that the Pacific Ocean is so far from Europe makes it harder to pinpoint the impact that ENSO has on this part of the world, especially when you consider all of the other climate patterns that stand in the way. This isn't to say that ENSO has absolutely no influence on Europe, because studies have indeed shown that there is some kind of correlation, as you'll see in the next section. So, in conclusion of section 1, the Climate Prediction Center stated in their latest ENSO discussion that a weak and short duration La Niña is predicted for this upcoming winter, so that could theoretically make the conventional La Niña impacts less pronounced. Regardless, we still expect it to have an effect on the weather around the world, including Europe. With those thoughts in mind, let's dig deeper into how ENSO works with other climate anomalies and indirectly affects Europe in particular. One of the main ways that ENSO affects European weather is by influencing a climate anomaly closer to us, known as the NAO. NAO stands for the North Atlantic Oscillation, and it describes the irregular fluctuation in strength of two pressure patterns, specifically the Asotish High and the Icelandic Low. During a positive NAO phase, both the Asotish High and Icelandic Low are stronger, creating a greater difference in pressure which results in a stronger and more zonal Atlantic jet stream. This typically favors wet and mild conditions in northern Europe while the south is dry. In a negative NAO phase, the opposite is true, allowing for a weaker and more variable jet stream. This becomes more favorable for cold air intrusions in northern Europe with wetter conditions likely in the south. Throughout my research, it was difficult to find a standard NAO response to an El Niño or La Niña. This is because there's just so many other pieces to the puzzle, some of which we still don't fully understand, which continue to make this a topic of debate. Nonetheless, there is an interesting detail regarding La Niña that stands out. One study found that when the coolest sea surface temperatures are further east, also known as an East Pacific La Niña, there's a stronger negative NAO signal, while the opposite is true for a Central Pacific La Niña. So with that line of reasoning, if La Niña is more east-based this winter, there should be a better chance of a negative NAO pattern. Another climate anomaly which I found interesting was the QBO, which stands for the Quasi-Biennial Oscillation. Unlike the NAO, which changes more frequently and has a more direct effect on European weather, the QBO is a regular variation in winds that blow in the stratosphere above the equator. The wind direction alternates between easterly and westerly roughly every 14 months, eventually affecting the weather on the surface. 
Just for some context, while the QBO is in the easterly phase, there's a greater chance of a weakened jet stream and sudden stratospheric warming events. During a westerly phase, the opposite is true, with a greater chance of a strong jet stream. Last winter had an easterly QBO, so that led me to predict an increased chance of sudden stratospheric warming events in my winter outlook. So now as the QBO transitions from an easterly phase to a westerly phase, this would hint at a lower chance of stratospheric polar vortex disruptions and possibly a milder winter, but that's when a plot twist comes in again. First and foremost, QBO phases during an El Niño may not have the same impact to the weather as they would during a La Niña. In addition, since the QBO is very high in the atmosphere, it can be directly influenced by solar cycles. Many of you have probably heard of or even experienced the Aurora Borealis in unexpected places this year, and that's because we're currently in a solar maximum, or when solar activity reaches its peak and sunspots are abundant. This is significant because studies have shown that a solar maximum can basically override the usual stabilizing effect that the westerly QBO has on the polar vortex, ultimately making it more susceptible to breaking down and unleashing colder air across North America, Europe, and Asia. In conclusion of section 2, we have established that La Nina will persist through the winter of 2024 through 2025, and in addition to other factors such as the placement of the coldest sea surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific and the impact of solar activity on the QBO, there is reason to believe that the upcoming winter could be driven by a weakened stratospheric polar vortex and a negative NAO. Now that the foundation has been laid, let's move on to the third and final section of this video. Starting with precipitation, I'm leaning towards wetter conditions further south while the north is drier. This doesn't mean we won't see any storm systems hitting the UK and Ireland, for example, it just means that it could be less than average, especially compared to last winter. On the temperature map, I think we're going to see a milder winter overall in the south, which could partly be due to Atlantic systems bringing warmer and humid air from lower latitudes, not to mention the warm sea surface temperatures of the Atlantic itself and Mediterranean. For Iceland, the UK, Ireland, and the Nordic countries, and other areas included in the blue, a colder winter is possible. Lastly, for my overall forecast, let's put those maps together to come up with my winter highlights. Starting in the UK and Ireland, a less prevalent westerly influence, especially in the second half of winter, could lead to drier conditions, while opening the door to cold air intrusions from mainland Europe. If conditions are just right, this could even set the stage for the beast from the east, a phrase used to describe cold and snowy conditions in the UK. Southern Europe and possibly extending out towards the Middle East can look for milder weather overall, with wetter conditions possible as well. I would also watch for a couple significant cold waves making it further south, especially when high pressure is present across Northern Europe. Across the Nordic and Baltic countries, Iceland and Russia, colder and drier conditions are possible overall. Lastly, in between the green area in the south and the blue towards the north, we might have a better chance of cold air and snowfall events. I think this is going to conclude my European winter forecast. If nothing else, I hope this video helped you better understand and appreciate the intricacy of weather forecasting and why it still remains an inexact science. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing so you never miss any of my in-depth weather forecasts like this one, as well as updates for dangerous weather events affecting Europe in the short term. It would also help this video if you drop a like and share it with a friend or family member who may find it useful or interesting. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.